Hey everybody. Uh, the other day I had a viewer ask me a very good question and we're going to discuss it a little bit today. He asked me why since I treat my tanks for cyanobacteria why does it keep coming back and why do I have to keep retreating it? Uh, he explained to me that he once had an outbreak of cyanobacteria he treated it with the same product I use and that was that. He never had any more issues with it. So today I want to use this rock here as an example to get us started. Uh, if you will notice there's a line where it sort of goes from being clean looking to being dirty. Uh, that is significant and we're going to get into that in a moment. But I really want you to just look at the rock for a minute and see how much stuff is actually growing on there already. Uh, a lot of that brown you see is probably diatom algae but it could be cyanobacteria. Uh, the bright green you see, I'm pretty certain, is cyanobacteria and not algae. Uh, I have quite a bit of it in this tank already, but this rock is significant for a reason. I just did a video recently where I actually showed you uh, my process for preparing that rock. And I'll go ahead and attach a card to it, and you'll get an idea of the lengths I went to to make sure that rock was uh, free of any kind of uh, unwanted growth and yet we see that cyanobacteria and diatom algae growing all over it this frequently or this uh, soon since I put it in the tank it's only been in there for maybe uh, two months at the most um, I'm also currently treating my brackish tank over here for cyanobacteria you can see the glass is covered with stuff and the rocks in there are brown instead of rock colored uh, that's all cyanobacteria and then this tank here is the other one that I'm currently treating. That one has so much cyanobacteria in it that it's just unmistakable. You can see those sheets of green uh, that are just growing all over the roots and rocks and everything in there. Uh, that also is cyanobacteria. And I have had a lot of it in this tank uh, over the couple of years I've had this tank up and running. I've always fought with it in this tank and there is a reason for that as well. So sit back, we're going to have a little conversation about cyanobacteria, we're going to look at my 125 here while we talk about it, and we're not only going to talk about cyanobacteria, but we're going to talk about how it relates to your fish tank, why we get it, how to deal with it, and most importantly we're going to talk about why I keep having to deal with it, because I've been doing some research, and it makes perfect sense why I've never been able to eradicate it completely. So get ready for a long conversation. All right, let's start by talking about what cyanobacteria actually is. Cyanobacteria is a very primitive organism that falls somewhere between algae and bacteria. Uh, it has traits of both. It does need light to photosynthesize like an algae would, but it also needs the nutrients, uh, phosphates in particular, the way a bacteria would need a food source. So when you have highly lit tanks, when you have well-fed tanks when you have high levels of organics. These are all the conditions that make it just right for cyanobacteria to grow very well. Uh, I just did a video recently where I talked about lighting and I go into a little more detail about the kind of lighting that cyanobacteria uh, thrives on. This tank in particular does not have much of that kind of lighting but this tank also doesn't have a huge problem with the cyanobacteria. I just have it in this tank. Um, the tanks that I have real issue with it are different tank conditions and I'll get into that in a minute. Right now just looking at this tank, when I do my water changes and when I treat tanks for cyanobacteria and I use the hydrogen peroxide, um, I shot a video with that rock that we just looked at a few minutes ago and I showed you how I prepared it and I won't go into a ton of detail but I soaked that rock in bleach water for days before putting it in this tank. I soaked it in hydrogen peroxide. I sprayed it with straight hydrogen peroxide directly on it. I scrubbed it with a scrub brush. I did a lot of work preparing that rock. When I put it in the tank I was still getting some reaction from the bleach and the hydrogen peroxide so I assumed that there was still some you know microscopic organisms growing on that rock and sure enough they're there already and it's got that growth growing all over it now if you notice that line where there's heavy growth versus lighter growth that is my minimum water line uh, when I do massive water changes I take the water level all the way down to there and then when that surface is exposed I can spray that with hydrogen peroxide 
and that keeps it at bay. Now the reason I point that out and the reason I point out what I did to prepare that rock is I want you to consider the effort I put into preparing that rock whether you've watched that video or not suffice it to say I did a lot of bleach a lot of very hot water a lot of scrubbing a lot of direct hydrogen peroxide on it and yet I still did not sterilize that rock so considering that Think about when I do a hydrogen peroxide treatment on my tank. I'm using 3 mil per gallon or less, you know, very low concentration because I don't want to injure my fish. Or I should say technically I don't want to injure them any more than necessary. Um, and I do a 20 to 30 minute treatment and I'm done. And I flush the tank out and I put fresh water back in it. So if putting those rocks in bleach for several days did not sterilize it, how much effect do you think my 20 minute treatment's having? Well, it's having the kind of effect I expect it to have. Um, I say all the time when I do my um, tank maintenance type videos where I'm showing you these different processes I go through of, of keeping this stuff in check, um, I, that's just part of how I maintain my tanks. I, I know what's going on down here. I understand what is happening in there. I'm in unusual circumstances down here. I've got... Uh, elevated CO2 levels because we're in my basement. I've done a video on that recently where I discuss why my plants grow so vigorously. Well, that affects algal growth and that affects cyanobacteria growth. Um, I'm a heavy-handed feeder. So the nitrites, or I'm sorry, I keep saying nitrites, the nitrates and uh, more importantly for the cyanobacteria is the phosphates that build up in a tank from heavy feeding, heavy stocking load, etc. Uh, play a role and highly lit tanks which all of mine are I just like nice brightly lit tanks both for my plants and because I like to see my fish um, all of these things play a role into why I have um, this this growth that I can never get on top of even when you do a treatment with the product that is meant to kill the cyanobacteria it is seldom going to completely eradicate it for, for the most part, your average aquarist who has a well-maintained tank that then suddenly has a freak outbreak of cyanobacteria and then treats their tank for it will probably assume they have completely eradicated it from their tank because they will no longer have any issues with it. Um, they, they probably have not eradicated it, but they've just gotten it back to where it's no longer under outbreak conditions and the tank goes back to being a well-maintained tank. Um, if you look at my tanks upstairs, I do less frequent water changes on them, but I, I seldom ever have to wipe the glass down. I have no green algae growing on anything. I don't have any issues with my tanks upstairs like that at all. They have less lighting. They just have the little uh, barely adequate LEDs that come inside the hoods when you buy the little starter kits on the 10-gallon tanks. They have little LED hoods. It's adequate lighting. The tanks look nice enough, but I'm not going to grow any lush vegetation or anything in them. I have some low light plants, like some java, uh, growing in there, and it, they look fine. The, the java sits there practically in stasis. It just looks green. It hardly ever grows. It hardly ever puts off new shoots. Um, I just don't have any issues with growth up there. I feed those tanks two little pinches of food a day because I'm just not upstairs very often and I feed them in the morning and the evening. So those tanks are maintained in the way that, um, I'll, I don't know how to word this without making myself sound like a bad fish keeper, but those are the, way, those are the tanks that are maintained in the textbook style of minimal food, minimal lighting, minimal stocking density, etc. These tanks down here are my tanks. These are the tanks that I play with and that I enjoy. They're heavily stocked. They're very well lit. I keep the light on them for probably 12 to 14 hours a day. Uh, I feed them six or seven times a day, literally. I really do. I just, I, they're my babies, and I just, I do rounds all the time, and I just feed all my fish all the time. So there's reasons my tanks look the way they do. I've said this before. I'll say it again. This is not a how-to channel. This is a how-I-do-it channel. This is the reason I have all these high-maintenance schedules. This is the reason I have to get in there and do these treatments for cyanobacteria from time to time. Now, the tanks where I've got the greater outbreaks are tanks that I've had other issues in the past with. I've had uh, lighting issues with. Um, I've had water circulation issues. The less oxygen you have in the water, the more... Uh, rapidly your cyanobacteria will grow it, in an anaerobic situation if you have any uh, low, very low water movement areas in your tank where not a lot of oxygen is exchanging uh, you'll even grow 
pockets where it's denser growth of cyanobacteria in those areas of your tank. So not all of my tanks are as similar as they appear at first glance. They are all their own individual tanks. They all have their own kind of lighting. They all have their own stocking density. They all have their own amount of plants. They all have their own filtration. Um, no two tanks, even my tanks, are alike. And that's why some of them I have these issues that are ongoing. Uh, how I treat them, you know, how aggressively I get in there and try to eradicate the cyanobacteria uh, determines partly how quickly it grows back and how frequently I have to stay on top of it. Um, but the idea that I'm going to get this stuff out of my tank and just be done with it once and for all is something I long ago just accepted as not a reality. I'm just, if I want to have my tanks the way I like to have my tanks, brightly lit, uh, down here in my basement with high CO2 levels, I like lush vegetation, I like my fish to be nice and fat and happy, so I'm a heavy feeder. And again, I pay the price for all this. I understand what I'm doing, I understand the effect it's having on my tank, and the result is I'm able to manage it because of that. And that's why I shoot these videos. The more you know about what's going on in your tank and understanding how everything ties together, and it really does. I've demonstrated in videos that the, the, the very act of me down here breathing is having a direct impact on my tanks. The more you understand about how your tank functions, the better you can manage and maintain it to suit your needs and to suit your time schedule and to suit the way you like to do maintenance and so on and so forth. There's all these compromises that always have to be made. Um, there, you know, I might like to have less cyanobacteria in my tank, but that would mean I'd have to have a very different tank. I'd have to have less light on it. I'd have to have less fish in it. I'd have to, you know, refrain from feeding it as much as I like to. So there's this tit for tat. I am very aware when I feed the tank, I will occasionally sit and think for a moment, ah, do I really want to do that because I'm really going to, you know, and I won't. Sometimes I'll just say, nah, they, they don't need to be fed. I know they're banging their faces up against the glass. But they always do that. If I fed them every time they did that, I, I would just have to stand in front of the tank with a can of food in my hand all day. Um, so it is a struggle for me to, you know, manage myself with the tanks because I am a part of these tanks. I'm the thing that keeps the tank running. I'm the, the mechanism that makes the water get clean. I'm the mechanism that makes the food get in there. I'm the mechanism that makes the lights come on in the daytime happen versus nighttime. Um, so I'm very much a part of this tank, so I have to manage myself and the way I deal with my tanks as much as I manage my fish and whether I've got fish that are too aggressive or some that are too greedy and I have to make sure I get some food to the bottom for other fish. Well, I have to make sure I don't put way too much food in there or come down here too frequently uh, and, and put food in or leave the lights on until 1 in the morning because I didn't feel like going to bed just yet and then so now my fish are going to have to get all out of whack because they had a really long day today. Um, you know, whether I feel like going to bed or not, when it's time for lights out, it's time for lights out, I put the fish out, and then I go upstairs and I do whatever, but the lights are out down here now, and the day is over. So, all in all, you know, when it comes to the cyanobacteria, that is just part of my fish tank life down here. Again, I have no issues with it upstairs. Uh, maybe I'll shoot a little couple segments of video and I'll intersperse that at the end and uh, just give you a quick look at what the tanks look like and you'll see that there's just no green growth, there's no algae, there's no cyanobacteria and I don't really do anything to those tanks at all. I don't really do much in the way of water changes. About once a month I'll do a big 50%, 60% water change and then that's it. Lights on, lights off every day and a couple pinches of food and then I do filter changes You know, when I notice the filters are running a little bit slow and, the, and they're getting clogged up. That's all I do to those tanks and I have no issues with them at all so again it's just because the tanks are down here it's the conditions they're in it's the lighting and everything else so I will never be rid of this and um, if you have it in your tank um, I guess then you're gonna have to start you know considering whether or not you're always gonna have it you know if you really do want to get it out of your tank and eradicate it uh, it takes a great deal of effort to do it in the first place you have to either treat thoroughly uh, with some sort of treatment or you have to get in there and th so thoroughly scrub your tank and black it out for several days at a time. Um, it's very difficult to completely eradicate cyanobacteria from your tank. And then once you've done that, you would then have to really seriously consider why did you have the outbreak in the first time? Do I have to manage my tank differently? Do I have to feed less? Do I have to have less lighting? 
um, replacing your lighting. I say this all the time. I can't say this enough. If you have fluorescent tubes on there that are more than a year old, you need to replace your fluorescent tubes. They're not doing what you think they're doing in your tank. Um, whether you have a planted tank or not, um, you, your fish will look better under a newer tube. Uh, algal growth will be reduced under a newer tube. Cyanobacterial growth will be reduced under a newer tube. Tubes degrade over time, the quality of light gets poorer, and you start flooding your tank with a very lower quality light as far as, when I say quality of light, I mean as far as what plants need to grow. It's what that stuff that's undesirable thrives on. It's what will make your bacteria take off. It's what will make your algae take off. Always replace your lights when they're a year old. So that's about it as far as I have to say. Uh, I feel like I'm just going to start rambling in circles because again it's just everything ties in with everything. There's no one thing you can do to your tank that does not affect every other aspect of your tank. Everything is tied together right up to and including how much you breathe in the room your fish tanks are in. That impacts your tanks. So I will continue the conversation. I'll keep putting the videos out. You keep feeding me the questions and the comments. They're always helpful. They always, uh, you know, get me to do more videos and get me to start thinking about different things and doing research in different ways. So I always learn a lot from you. I hope you learn a lot from me. And uh, together we will make the hobby better for everybody. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching this one. I will see you on the next one. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. You don't want to miss any of these videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you real soon.